This is a giant pain in the ass. But again, GED. Tin Hut. Salute, Booth Campers. How you doing? I'm Andrew Scott, of course, and you are back at Booth Camp. And this is going to be probably the fastest mic shootout ever. Nobody likes unboxing videos. Nobody likes needless information. So I'm going to condense all that stuff right now. Okay, so what I got for you today, thanks to my good friend Matt from over on the Booth Camp Discord server, link below, is the Aston... Is it Aston? It is Aston. The Aston Spirit. And I'm going to struggle a lot to not follow up the word Aston with the word Martin. Uh, this is a British-built microphone. And frankly, the Brits aren't known for their microphones. When you think of outside the USA microphone manufacturers, you think of the Germans, Neumann, Sennheiser, Schopes. Welcome to Schöps Mikrofone. My name is Ulrich Schöps. Microphones like that. Well, frankly speaking, all three of those are out of the price range of most beginning VO people. So it's not particularly an apples to apples comparison. Now, of course, the other out of the U.S. manufacturer that we're all generally speaking, pretty familiar with, is the Chinese. And that's where so much of today's electronics are coming from. So Aston on their box and on all their literature trumpets their Britishness a great deal. And, you know, props to them, right? Now, personally speaking, I'm agnostic when it comes to nationality of your microphone. I'm pretty sure... A lot of the electronics in both of these microphones in front of me uh, come from Asia. And the mic that I am letting it saddle up to is my Lewitt 441 Flex. And the reason why is because both of these microphones are multi-pattern. Now, the 441 Flex has a lot. The Aston Spirit has three. It can work as a cardioid. It can work as an omnidirectional, and it can work as a figure eight. Now, generally speaking, that's what the Lewitt does as well. The Lewitt's got a little bit more by way of tunability as far as its pickup and its cardioid pattern goes. But, you know, if, if you really want to just strip it down to what can these mics do, they are multi-pattern microphones that offer you either you know, a, a figure eight or an omnidirectional in addition to its standard cardioid. Now, this looks to me to be just your standard, you know, regular cardioid pickup polar pattern. Uh, if I'm wrong, you know, there'll be words underneath me. But I really don't want to dive into the minutia of these two microphones. As you see, I'll be switching back and forth between the two of them. And honestly, you can make up your mind about which one you like the sound of better. Now, I've purposefully left off the plosive screen of my Lewitt so that we can have more of an apples to apples test when it comes to the plosive sensitivity level of these microphones. Really what I want to talk about today, uh, and I'm using these two microphones to demonstrate it, is does it really matter? Does the amount of money you spend really matter when it comes to a microphone? Does the aesthetics matter? Do the features of the microphone matter? Now, in short, and you're going to be surprised at how short this video actually is. Um, no. No, they really don't. And the reason why I say that is this. As a voice artist, as a voice actor, 
How often are you going to be using figure eight? How often are you going to be using omnidirectional? Now, in both of these microphones cases, one of the benefits of owning them is that you do have some flexibility. And depending upon the type of producer you are, flexibility could be wildly useful. It could also kind of be a eh sort of thing. What we really talk about when you are starting out in voiceover is mostly price. And yes, I purposefully blew that over well over the top of the microphones. Price is really what matters. Price and, to a certain degree, quality. Now, there are plenty of microphones that I would direct people away from when it comes to their first microphone to do voiceover. And yeah, there's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of very cheap gamer microphones that people try to use for voiceover that just really don't work. But really, when it comes down to price and value for dollar, you need to think of a couple things. Number one, can I afford the mic that I'm interested in without going too deeply into debt, if debt at all? I don't like debt, even though I'm pretty much up to here in it. You've got all the other things that you need to consider as well. Does it take phantom power? Does it have the sensitivity range that suits my voice and I'll be doing a whole different video on really how to buy a mic for your voice sometime in the future. But for the most part, really everything else comes down to aesthetics and a certain level of practicality. Now, in the case of this Aston, I think it sounds fine. Would it work for your first voiceover mic? Yeah. Would it work for your first voiceover mic at its price? Also, yeah. You're getting a microphone that arguably sounds pretty close to this Lewitt. And this Lewitt cost $400. This Aston cost considerably less than that. And considerably less than that in two ways. Way number one is just its street price. Way number two is because my buddy Matt, who is a man cut of the same cloth as myself, found it on a deal and jumped on the deal. He was ready. He was looking for an additional microphone for his mic locker. Careful, Matt. Remember, check the gas video. And I'm not always the best example he knew that Aston had been getting pretty darn good reviews in the voiceover and microphone world. So when that deal came up, he jumped on it. And I fault him not. Matter of fact, he jumped on it so much that um, he bought two of them at that price and very kindly shipped one to me to do this video. There are a lot of good things to say about cheap mics. There are a lot of good things to say about buying and spending your money shrewdly when you're starting in VO. That should go without saying, but here I am saying it again. But the rest of it comes down to practicalities. And here's an example of a practicality that you really only discover once the delivery guy sets the package on your door and you cut it open. I like the sound of this Aston. I do not like this Aston. Like, I don't get it. Overall, it's a really unfriendly microphone. Pretty unfriendly, actually. So normally when I do a mic shootout, I use uh, something like this. This is a Gator Frameworks. I don't know if that's going to come in by way of focus. It is what it is. It is what it looks like. You can mount two mics to this and then mount this to one mic arm. And I like that because even when I'm not doing mic shootouts, I normally have two microphones at my desk. I have my Lewitt 441 Flex and I'll often have my Neumann TLM 102. Sometimes I'll use my Maono PM500, um, but it's nice to, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of getting something set up and not messing with it. 
this YouTube uh, channel is not a good example of that. But um, you can't put this Aston on this arm, on this adapter. Uh, and I'll show you a picture of why. It just doesn't fit. The mic mount and the input for an XLR cable are ridiculously close together on this thing. Um, that is a design flaw that I am big into the negatory on. They really didn't think of a broad enough use case for their microphone. They actually tout that it, what do they say here? Oh, they actually, uh, on their, on their thing here, they actually tout direct to stand microphone mounting. Like that's some kind of upsell. Um, that's a negative. Now, if you're using this for podcasting, yeah, you might be able to get away with it. It'd be okay. Um, in order to use my Lewitt in this regard uh, and have them at the same height, because you'll you'll see here, these are uh, this is a significantly large microphone. Unlike the Lewitt, which uh, it's very attractive because of its small footprint, and that includes the shock mount. Uh, by the way, you'll notice there's no shock mount here. Um, I don't know if Aston sells a proprietary one or what have you, but um, I don't like that either. But I actually had to uh, take my Lewitt off of my my blue uh, passport arm, which I have a number of because I like them and they're reasonably priced. Link below. Non-affiliate links. Every link down below is non-affiliate, by the way. I get no money for those things. Um, but... Really, I had to put it on a different microphone stand just so that I could equate them in height. Uh, the other thing that I'm not hugely impressed with is their aesthetic. Now, and I know they're going for a thing. And honestly, it, it could possibly be my thing, but it's not. They're kind of going for a steampunky looking industrial type thing. I mean, the the body of this microphone is, I mean, it looks like it's just galvanized. It almost looks like um, it was made with uh, HVAC ducting. Everything about this looks very HVAC. Um, the grill on it just looks unfriendly. Looks like you could cut your lip on it if you got too close. The built-in uh, plosive rejection filter material looks like steel wool. And I'm just not a fan. And again, this is a large microphone. I would say this is easily, let me... Yeah, I would say this is easily as big as a Rode NT1 or NT1A. It, it's got a presence. All that said and done... You've heard the proof in the pudding. Now, um, to des to describe, though, I'm going into my Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, I'm not really doing anything by way of EQ on these things. I'm just leaving them alone. The only thing I'm doing is I've got some noise reduction on because it's the middle of the day here, and I, you know, we don't need that. Um, I will say, though, that the Aston is a quiet microphone. It seems to my ears... Uh, with noise reduction off, um, that it's probably on par with the Lewitt 441. But I'm going to leave this up to you. So you can get this Aston for noticeably less than you can for the Lewitt 441. And considerably less if you bargain hunt or, you know, grab it while it's on Black Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, you need to make a decision about whether or not a mic is worth it to you. This is a good mic. I would say overall, I do like my Lewitt better for my voice. I think the Aston is a little bit smoother or possibly a little bit too smooth to my ears for my voice. You put somebody with a much more treble in their voice on this microphone, might work might work great. But again, as I said, the real deciding 
factor on any microphone is whether or not you can record it, whether or not it will work with your setup. And again, in the case of this Aston, um, you would have to do a bunch of reconfiguring in order to get this on a halfway decent mic arm. I had to use one of my cheap old springy, springy, cheapo microphone arms. And that works okay. But really, the greatest factor is how your voice sounds on it. For many people, this would suit them perfectly. But sadly, you kind of got to use it in order to find out. That's one of the reasons why when you're buying microphones, if you can buy used, you're reducing your spend. Absolutely true. But you have no recourse in the event that it's not a good choice for you. So there really is something to be said for buying online through a purveyor that has a very good return policy. Because then you can try it out, and if it doesn't work, you're not out the money. Now, obviously, check every single one of your online sellers to understand what their return policy is. Some will refund your money to your card. Others will hold it in account, and you'll have to spend it again. But if you're really hunting for a microphone and you need to do this a lot, that might not hurt so much because you've earmarked a certain budget for money and you'll constantly keep getting that money back. And so you can just kind of keep on buying microphones and trying them out until you find the one that works for you. So which one do you like better? This one or this one? As is always the case, the choice is yours not mine. Anyways, that's what's happening here today at Booth Camp. Do us a favor. If you found this valuable, do the like, click, subscribe thing and hit us on the Booth Camp Discord link below. But until next time, everybody, I'm Andrew Scott and you've been at Booth Camp. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.